Hi everyone, I'm Father Scott Vanderveer, and we are celebrating the first week of Advent this week, which traditionally has been dedicated to the concept of hope. The first week of Advent is centered around hope. And it's interesting that when we use the word hope, we're often meaning one of two things. We're either expressing a desire for something that is beyond our power to control, that we are very filled with expectant wishfulness that it could come true. So we might say, boy, I hope it'll be sunny tomorrow. And that is a form of hope that is mostly wishing. I wish that it could be true that tomorrow will be a sunny day. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it is different than saying, I hope that my children will go to college one day. Because that kind of hope is more of a planning. It's more of a willingness to contribute to an outcome. If we hope that it will be sunny tomorrow, we're wishing that things will turn out to be bright and clear. But if we're hoping our children will go to college, within that intention is the willingness to do homework with that child, to contribute to that child's developing good skills and habits and disciplines. It is a, a willingness to start a fund at the bank to be able to pay for tuition. It involves agreeing to go to parent-teacher conferences and perhaps hire a tutor and really work with the child on meeting some of the goals that are hardest to reach. Hoping can be wishing or it can be intending and investing our, our spiritual force into something. And I think that is the kind of hope, that second kind, that is about Advent where we say, Christ came to earth once. He lived among us and was like us in every single way except sinfulness. And then he made his way to God's glorious eternal kingdom where he prepares the way for us. When we say, I want that kingdom where Christ now lives, to determine what life is like here. When I say, let your kingdom come on earth just as it is in heaven, I am willing to do something about that, to invest in that, to use my virtues to work toward achieving that. I am saying, I am willing to participate in the coming of your kingdom. So it's different than wishing. Your kingdom come, your will be done is a way of intending what we are going to cooperate with God in bringing about. That's a very exciting way, I think, to look at hope. Interestingly, St. Thomas Aquinas told us that there are three areas of human life that are the most exalted parts of us. And he said, the most exalted parts of us are our intellect, our memory, and our will or our desire. We are at our highest level of functioning when we are dealing with our memory, with our intellect, and with our will. Those are the things that are the highest centers of us. So interestingly, he said that each one of those corresponds with one of what we always called the theological virtues. He said that those virtues purify those high functioning centers in us. So the, the three theological virtues, oh, this is a good quiz if you went to Catholic school. Do you know the three theological virtues? You probably know them, but you might not know that they're called the theological virtues. Faith, hope, and love. Those are the theological virtues. They're separate from what we call the cardinal virtues, 
of prudence and justice, of fortitude and temperance, because those other virtues are things that we're in charge of. Those are things that are our responsibility. They are, as they say, the things that are inside our hula hoop. But, but faith, hope, and love can only come as gifts from God. That's why they are the theological virtues. So listen to this. St. Thomas Aquinas says, whenever your will or your desire needs to be purified, the best way to purify it is by love. Whatever you're willing to happen in your life or in the world, if you apply love to it, it'll become a pure intention. Our intellect, our ability to reason and use our intelligence, that is purified by faith. Because faith tells us there's things that are beyond our ability to know or to solve or to prove. So it purifies our intellect. But this one is perhaps one of the best. Our memory. Our memory is purified by hope. Because when we think to the past and we think of all that we've been through and all the good and all the bad, all the glory and all the struggle, we realize that we must apply hopefulness that we can grow and change and improve. We must be willing to make room for things to be different tomorrow than they were yesterday. Our intellect is purified by our faith. Our memory is purified by our hope. And our will or our desire is purified by pure love. So that is the hope that we're talking about when we are in Advent. It's different than hopes. Hopes are things that we are perhaps wishing for. They are outcomes that we are a little bit attached to. Like it being sunny tomorrow or like us having a nice family Christmas. I hope that this will happen or that will happen is actually expressing hopes, individual hopes. But the virtue of hope is universal and global. Hope is not hopes. Hope is a willingness to be open to life. It's a willingness to be open to surprise. It is the awareness that life can throw things at us that we didn't see coming, but that doesn't mean that God's power is thwarted or, or God is unable to act on our behalf. Hopes are things, outcomes that we want. Hope is the great virtue that trusts life. So as we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent, let us together trust life and let us be willing to invest our hope into purifying the past and making way for a beautiful tomorrow. May God bless you all.